What's up, movie crew? Welcome to the latest collection video. Before I get started, if you are new to this channel, my name is Luke, this is Let's Watch a Movie, and if you're anything cinema and physical media related, you've come to the right place, so hit that subscribe button. All right, today, I will be showing off my DC animated TV shows. Now I know this one, if I said this was supposed to happen a few weeks ago, long story short, started recording it, and for whatever reason, when I went to upload it from my camera to my computer, it ended up showing up as three separate files instead of one, and my computer didn't acknowledge that any of those files were existing files. So, I gotta kind of Frankenstein this thing. So, I'll have timestamps down below. The first part of this video will be the animated shows from the 40s through to the 60s. The second part will be the 70s and 80s. The next part after that will be the 90s. And then we're going to end it with everything from 2001 to present day that's on physical media. All right, so this is the first part of the video, and this is going to be the 40s up through the 60s. All right, so the first one is technically not a TV show because it was created before the existence of television, but I've got this Superman box set that features the original Fleischer Superman animated shorts. I've got this DVD box set that features it, along with some other stuff, and you will probably see this box set again later in this collection. And I've got the Superman Anthology set that also features them on Blu-ray. They are not restored, but this is the only Blu-ray release I have of it. Now, I know what some of you are probably thinking, didn't the Fleischer series get a Blu-ray release? The answer is yes. I also have very multiple trusted sources that have told me it is one of the worst Blu-rays that Warner Brothers has ever put out. Therefore, I do not have it in my collection. So, now we are going into the 60s. There was no animated stuff from DC released during the 50s. And the first thing we get is the new adventures of Superman. This is the season one set. And we've also got seasons two and three. Technically, this was all released over the course of four seasons, but this is how DC released the DVDs. Personally, not bad, but it is definitely not for people that read the stuff today. It is very much a product of its own time. One of the things that Superman got paired with was Aquaman. Now, if you're a fan of the Jason Momoa stuff or the more recent stuff, you're not going to like this series. This is very much cheesy Aquaman. Not fat-ass Aquaman. So you've been warned before you check this one out. Personally, it's not bad given the time frame it was released. But I'm also not a huge Aquaman fan, so I watched it once and that's pretty much it. Now, throughout this time, what they did was they paired a couple of shorts together. You'd get a Superman short, you'd get a Superboy short that's not on physical release yet. You'd get Aquaman, and then you'd get some of the lesser known DC characters. And that is where the Filmation Adventures comes in. I got both of these at Dollar Tree 
There is a two disc set that has both of these put together, but it runs for about 20 bucks. This is basically disc one, this is disc two, and it's got the special features that's on the regular release. So, 250 versus what you get with the box set. Simple as that. Overall, these aren't bad, but you only get a little glimpse of some of the characters. While the Flash might be front and center on this one, there's like two or three shorts with Flash. There's one or two with the Atom. There's one or two with Green Lantern. There's one or two with Hawkman. So... It, you don't get a lot with the lesser characters at the time. And we're going to wrap up the 60s with Batman. For anyone checking this out now, I know I said 60s and Batman, this is not the Adam West animated series. This one was done before that. And it features Olin Soul as the voice of Batman and Casey Kasem, yes, that Casey Kasem, as the voice of Robin. Me personally, I prefer Dark Broody Batman over Ha Ha Fun Adventure Batman. I'm also going to say this now. To anyone that still has the DVD, I would recommend keeping the DVD over upgrading to Blu-ray because there's definitely some restoration issues with the Blu-ray. Is it cool to have like one of the older shows on Blu-ray? Of course it is. But if you've got the DVD, stick to your DVD. That is everything from the 40s up through the 60s. The next one will be the 70s and 80s. All right, we are now in the 70s and 80s portion of the video. Now, before I get started on this part, for example, with the 70s, we had Super Friends have multiple iterations. So, instead of showing one portion of Super Friends and then showing something else, we're going to go through the entirety of Super Friends and then the next one. And it will also be like that with other portions of the video as well. But we're in the 70s and 80s, so let's get started. Now, during the 70s and 80s, this was when comics were a lot more lighthearted, a lot more fun. And that's when we got Super Friends. This is the very first one, and it was done by Hanna-Barbera. And at this particular point in time, their biggest thing was Scooby-Doo. And you can definitely tell with the first season of Super Friends. So you got Season 1, Volume 1, and Season 1, Volume 2. This is very much a Scooby-Doo-inspired series. They have a mystery to solve, and they solve it. I gotta be honest, I'm not a Super Friends person, but the first season is very much for those that like Scooby-Doo. The next one was the all-new Super Friends Hour. This is where they introduced the Wonder Twins. I've just got to be honest with everyone, I'm not a fan of the Wonder Twins whatsoever. When a lot of stuff started getting scrapped due to all these Warner Brothers mergers, the Wonder Twins movie getting scrapped was something I could have cared less about. I did not want to see that. So that's just me. So this was season two. Season three is the one that a lot of people know the most, and that is Challenge of the Super Friends. This is very much where it kind of came into You've got everyone sitting around at the Hall of Justice. 
they get a phone call, they go fight some crime, you got the occasional B-lister that's not part of the main group, so they go face one of their villains, and it's lather, rinse, repeat. Seasons four through six are some of the meh episodes, and that's not just towards me. That's not me giving my personal opinion, but we got season four. Season five. And season six. This is just where they kind of realized that what they did with Challenge of the Super Friends was working, so they kind of kept doing it with these particular sets. During the filming of, or I don't want to say filming, it's an animated series, while working on season six, they had more episodes ready for a potential season seven, and that was when American TV channels canceled Super Friends. Here's the problem. They were already working on season seven, so it ended up with an international release overseas and over here, what ended up being now known as Season 7 is The Lost Episodes. Season 8, this was after the success of Batman. So this is when they replaced Olin Soul with Adam West. And if I remember, yes, I'm looking at the back of it. Adam West was the only one to replace someone. Casey Kasem still voices Robin in this one. And this one, there's a little bit of a change. You can tell this is where they started changing some stuff up between the 70s and 80s. But it's still the whole lighthearted, kind of cheesy stuff. Then we have the... Final season, the Superpowers Team Galactic Guardians. During this time frame, that was when the Teen Titans comics started to really take off. And because of that, in here, we get Cyborg, voiced by Ernie Hudson. Like I said, still not the biggest fan of this one, but at the same time, it was cool seeing Cyborg. And at one point, they were wanting to do a Batman spinoff cartoon because Batman was starting to gain some traction in the comics. For those that aren't comic book people, Superman was DC's crown jewel for the longest time. And then in the 80s, when we got some of the Great people like Frank Miller writing Batman. Batman started getting popular again. And they were going to do something a little, not necessarily dark, but something a little bit closer to what they were doing in the comics. And they had a pilot sort of thing in this. It was good, but at the same time, still very much a product of its time. During all these seasons of Super Friends, we did get something with Batman. In this one, we do have Adam West and Burt Ward voicing Batman and Robin. Now, this is not season four of the live action show. This is very much its own thing, but they did bring back the two lead stars from series. On one end, it was cool because Adam, Adam West was doing his thing as Batman, but this has Batmite in it. I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm, that's all I got to say on that one. And we are going to finish up with the 80s with a Superman cartoon. Now, in 1989, no, 1988, we got the 50th anniversary of Superman. So, Warner Brothers and DC 
greenlit an animated series which is featured in this box set and that is the Ruby Spears Superman cartoon. While it is not quite what you would get in the 90s, 2000s, and present day, it is definitely worth checking out if you've never watched it before. This is the one where we get still a hopeful Superman, but sometimes in the 60s cartoon and even with the Fleischer series, he came across a bit naive. We don't get that with him this time. We get someone who wants to be hopeful, but still understands like, hey, I got to handle business. And this is where we get one of the more comic book accurate versions of Lex Luthor, where he is a megalomaniac, but he's not doing like the psychotic laugh or doing something stupid like that. He's trying to present himself as a decent person to the people while still being the foil to Superman. Personally, not a bad cartoon, but it did only last for 13 episodes. And that is everything from the 70s and 80s. All right, we are at the portion of the video that I am most looking forward to. That is the 90s. This is the stuff that I grew up on. This was what made me a DC Comics fan. This is a little bit of a hot take here, so I already know, go on ahead, say something down in the comments, but this portion of the comic book world is what made me prefer DC to Marvel. The first thing I'm about to show, not so much, but once I get past the first one, you'll understand. So the first thing that happened in the 90s, believe it or not, while Batman was starting to gain traction, there was another character in DC that wasn't Superman that was also getting a sizable audience. And that is Swamp Thing. Little known fact, we got two Swamp Thing live action movies before we ended up with what ended up being Batman Returns. So, we get the first Swamp Thing movie directed by Wes Craven, becomes a cult classic. We end up getting the second movie, Return of Swamp Thing. And this was when Cable was starting to become a thing. And USA greenlit a Swamp Thing live action TV series. And for those that didn't grow up in the 80s and 90s, when something gets a live action show, there's a very good chance it had an animated counterpart. Now, Swamp Thing, the TV series, lasted 72 episodes. This only lasted five. I think it was a rights issue or something like that. But Swamp Thing, the animated series, also doesn't do the character justice at this particular point in time. Swamp Thing was being released through DC's Vertigo imprint, which meant it was a little more mature. And this is aimed for kids, if that says anything. This next one right here. I personally think there's no disputing that this is the best animated thing that DC has ever done. This resulted in what is my favorite DC movie, live action or animated. And on a personal level, they made a comic book spinoff specifically for this. That was what helped me learn to read when I was a kid. So there's a lot here that makes this one important to me. And that is... Batman the Animated Series. After the success of the Tim Burton movie, they wanted an animated series, and they brought in Bruce Tim, Paul Dini, and Eric Radomski. Oddly enough, who were all working on Tiny Toons at the time. Yes, they went from Tiny Toons to Batman. And we get what is probably the greatest 
superhero cartoon ever made. There's a lot of lists that I've seen before of ranking animated shows, and this is normally in the top five, and I've seen two different ones that put this at number two only to The Simpsons when it goes to animated shows ever made. And there's a lot of reasons why. Kevin Conroy is my Batman. And I'm not the only person that will say that. A lot of cartoons back in the day only went for 65 episodes and that's it. You get your 65, you go into syndication, and you move on to your next product. Well, this did so well that Warner Brothers, and it was airing on Fox at the time because this was before WB had its own channel, wanted more. In fact, both Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill mentioned that there were supposed to be even more episodes than what we got, but Bruce Tim wanted to put most of his focus on what I'm about to show next. And for anyone wondering, this is also an Emmy Award winning series. Yes, I have to gush about this whenever I can. When the show finally came to an end, Bruce Tim started working on Superman the Animated Series. One of the things that happened a lot, especially during the 90s and early 2000s, is if someone works on Batman or Superman and the other one's not doing anything at the time, the people at DC, the people at Warner Brothers are asking, that's cool, can you do something with this character? And Bruce Tim took up the opportunity, and we end up getting one of the most iconic iterations of Superman. And we get our first shared universe. This particular iteration, this has Finest Worlds, a three-part crossover with Batman. There are another two episodes in the series that brings back Kevin Conroy, and they're so good. This didn't run as long as Batman the Animated Series. Part of it was because they kind of brought back Am Batman the Animated Series with the new Batman Adventures that has an animation style a little bit more similar to Superman the Animated Series. That ran for 24 episodes. That's also in the Batman the Animated Series box set. And then they moved on to the next product project. And that was Batman Beyond. In the late 90s, this was the part when TV censors started getting a little more strict with what you could and couldn't do on shows aimed for younger audiences. So instead of trying to water down what they were doing with Batman the Animated Series, the team behind the DCAU ended up doing a Batman spinoff. In this, Batman Beyond, you've got a new Batman and Terry McGinnis, voiced by Will Friedle, You've got Kevin Conroy coming back as a retired Bruce Wayne, and he's acting as a mentor of sorts to the new Batman. This one's a very futuristic one, where you had the classical soundtrack with Batman the Animated Series. This one has more of an electronic techno sort of style. This lasted for 52 episodes. We will get into what took its place in a minute because that's in the next portion of this video. And we also ended up this particular, this is the box set that came with the limited edition set that had the Batman Beyond Funko Pop. This was the case inside for anyone wondering why my box set looks different from the one that you normally see. And no, I haven't gotten the steelbook yet because my local Walmart doesn't have the steelbook. 
But this also includes Return of the Joker, where Mark Hamill comes back, voices the Joker, and voices Jordan Pierce. All right, so technically this one started off in 2000, but I kind of needed something to not have a stack that was about to fall on me, so this one is in the 90s section. During the 90s, there was a new comic book company that got started called Milestone Media. And this was one that wanted to have more diverse characters in the comics. Prior to this time, we had Jon Stewart as Green Lantern, and that's really about it. Pretty much all the other characters were white. So Milestone Media made brand new characters, they made them diverse, and eventually they partnered up with DC, and the first big thing we got out of the partnership between DC and Milestone Media, Static Shock. There are a couple of changes between the comic and the TV series, but in this one, you got Virgil, who is basically a superhero fanboy who ends up getting superpowers. While this wasn't initially part of the DCAU, we do eventually start getting crossovers. For example, I will be showing it off in a minute with Justice League. We had Jon Stewart voiced by Phil Lamar, who also voices Virgil. So they brought him in since they already have the voice actor. We've got Justice League crossovers, and we have a couple of Batman crossovers as well, including one with Batman Beyond. This is the first season. And for the record, at the moment, Static Shock is currently not available on Blu-ray, and all four seasons are only available through Warner Archive, so you gotta buy them online. Season two. And with season three, this is where he changes up his superhero suit. And then we got the final season. Yes, I bought this one used because it's not cheap. And this one had the Batman Beyond crossover. And I gotta say, that is probably one of my favorite crossovers in the DCAU because usually people have difficulties getting along with Bruce. Virgil had problems getting along with Terry and it made for an interesting dynamic because that's not what you normally get when it goes to crossovers and Batman. Usually people have difficulties getting along with Bruce Wayne, but you see throughout the appearances that Batman had in Static that Virgil understands Batman, kind of, and respects him greatly. Also, the episode where Batman reveals his identity to Virgil was kind of funny. That was pretty good. Given that Batman's a more serious character, it was a little bit of a lighthearted moment. So that is everything from the 90s up all right, we are in the final portion of the DC Animated Show Collection video. And this portion has everything from 2001 to present day. That's available on physical media because some of them have either just been announced or are just rumored. So during the time of the DCAU, they had success with Batman, the animated series. They had success with Superman, the animated series. They had success with Batman Beyond. One of the ones I don't have, Batman Beyond ended up with its own spinoff in the Zeta Project. So after years of being asked, Bruce Tim finally made an agreement with DC and we got the Justice League. This is definitely one of the best animated shows ever made. You get the team-ups, 
Season one did have a couple of rough patches because the first few episodes, they kind of made Superman look like a chump. And part of it was, all right, Superman just got beat up, so there's proof that you kind of need the team. Well, the problem with that is they kind of did that quite a few times, but after the first few episodes, we start seeing why we need to have them as a team and not just, oh, well, Batman can go to Gotham and Wonder Woman can go back to Themyscira and Superman can handle Metropolis, that sort of thing. So this was the beginning of it. For the most part, all the episodes from the first portion of Justice League were a lot of two-parters. And in season two, because this was a little bit more of an expensive show to make, there was the possibility that season two was going to be the final season. So they ended up doing the final episodes star-crossed. And I want to say now, and I probably should have had the DVD here. Starcrossed also has its own standalone DVD where all three episodes are put together as a TV movie, and it is so good. It's where you find out more about Hot Girl. They destroy the Watchtower. They do this really good finale. And Cartoon Network once more. So... We end up getting Justice League Unlimited. This one features the core group plus multiple lesser known characters. One of the big ones you see quite a bit is Green Arrow and you see Supergirl for quite a bit. So the first two seasons focus on Cadmus and once again, the season two finale, there was the possibility this show was going to get canceled. I will be getting to that in a minute. And they end up doing one more season where they give us the Legion of Doom. So for a show that ended up on the chopping block multiple times, still managed to come back and do stuff that made sense. A lot of shows that end up on the chopping block, they throw everything out there, and then it's like, oh, guess what? You're getting another season. Okay, so now they either have to undo what they just did, or they have to bring in a whole bunch of new people, hoping that we, the audience, are actually going to like it. So one of the issues with Justice League was they had to be limited on certain characters. Some of the characters they couldn't include were the sidekicks because we got Teen Titans. This particular box set was released through Warner Archive. It features all five seasons and the Trouble in Tokyo movie. And this is the first animated show since Swamp Thing. Well, technically since Wildcats, if you want to count that Image now owns that was released by Image at the time, but those characters have since been brought into DC. But if you want to go a little bit further back, this is the first one since Swamp Thing that features characters that's not part of the DCAU. And you can also see in this one, this was when anime was starting to become popular in America because this definitely takes a little bit of an anime style. You've got episodes that are Fairly serious for the most part, and then the next episode's a total goofball episode. The expressions on their faces when stuff happens, you can definitely tell. And the theme song as well. And how I wish they would bring back this Teen Titans over Teen Titans Go. By the way, spoiler alert, I do not own anything from Teen Titans Go that would be in this video. I have the movies, but that will be for a future video. One of the other issues that they were having with Justice League was 
we were finally getting a new Batman movie in the form of Batman Begins. And Warner Brothers wanted a new Batman cartoon on TV because we were getting a new live action movie for the first time since Batman and Robin. So because of that, that was one of the issues Justice League was having was that now they had to limit how often they use not only Batman, but his rogues gallery. And we ended up getting the Batman. So I know I'm not the only person that crapped on this show when it first came out for multiple reasons. It's not Kevin Conroy and Penguin looks weird and Joker looks weird and what's going on with this and why is every single villain in the first season when this is supposed to be a year one sort of thing. And re-watching it, yeah, season one kind of sucks. But the show does get better with each season. In fact, I will say that season five is probably easily the best of the series. Apologies for that. There was a group of motorcycles going by, so you might hear some sounds for a minute. In fact, season five was also when they brought in their version of the Justice League and seeing this version's Batman and Superman meeting for the first time was also really, really awesome. One of the funnier ones and still made sense. So if you're like me and you crapped on this show when it first came out, give it another watch. Like, yeah, season one's not great, but the show does improve with time. And honestly, I wish they would have kept it going a little bit longer than they did because season five is probably the best season of the show. And they had a really solid Justice League in the final season. While Warner Brothers was gearing up for Batman Begins, they were also gearing up for their first live action Superman in quite some time with Superman Returns. And just like Warner Brothers wanting a Batman cartoon, they wanted a new Superman cartoon as well. Well, someone at DC was like, let's get a little creative and let's do something different from just a standard Superman cartoon. And we ended up getting Crypto the Superdog. Now, this did not last as long as the Batman or Justice League the Animated Series, but for the most part, not a bad show. Lasted 39 episodes across two seasons. And in this one, you've got Crypto, who has been separated from Superman, but is kind of doing his own missions outside of Superman. You occasionally get episodes with Ace the Bat Hound. You get Streaky in a couple of episodes. Overall, not a bad cartoon, but this one's definitely for a younger audience. Now, while Crypto ended up not doing as well as they had hoped, so it ended up getting canceled, but Warner Brothers still wanted something Superman-centric because even though we ended up not getting one, there were plans at one point for a sequel to Superman Returns, so they wanted another Superman cartoon. Well, once again, someone at DC was like, let's get creative and do something different. So we ended up getting Legion of Superheroes. Personally, I did not watch this one when I was younger because around this time, that was when I started doing more school events. I ran track when I was in high school, so I wasn't really home when some of the stuff was on. So I didn't really watch it until I bought the Blu-ray not too long ago. Not a bad series. Unfortunately, it did only run for two seasons. It is definitely worth the watch. Check Amazon because that's where I bought the Blu-ray at. It is a lot better than I think people were expecting. I think it got a lot of complaints because, once again, it's not set in the same universe as Batman the Animated Series or Superman the Animated Series, so it didn't get the same level of love. 
And it was kind of on at the tail end of the DCAE. All right. The Batman did its 65 episode run. And now Cartoon Network wants a Batman cartoon because we're about to get The Dark Knight. Well, this is one of the times where someone once again was like, well, let's do something different for Batman. We already had Batman in the animated series. The Batman tried to do a similar vibe and kind of didn't get the best response when it was first on. So they decided to go with Batman the Brave and the Bold. This is definitely a throwback to the Silver Age. This is a lighthearted show. Yes, Batman's still kind of serious, but everyone around him is more lighthearted. You see a lot of team-ups with lesser-known characters. Blue Beetle, Aquaman, and Green Arrow were the ones that you see the most. Why they put Buana Beast on here, who was only in like two episodes instead of Aquaman, I'm not sure. But for the most part, you get Batman teaming up with one or two other superheroes to take on lesser-known villains. First season was really, really good. Had some really cool stuff. And you also have one where he ends up in a parallel universe taking on the crime syndicate. So you get to see him fight Owlman and it's really cool. And it did well enough to where we got season two. Season two, this is where they start bringing in some of the bigger names. You now have an episode with Joker. You've now got an origin story for this particular iteration of Batman. That being the episode Chill of the Night. For the most part, you get lighthearted episodes throughout The Brave and the Bold. Chill of the Night is where Batman comes face to face with Joe Chill. The one that kills Thomas and Martha Wayne in the comics. And in that particular episode, you get the crossover with Phantom Stranger and the Spectre. Phantom Stranger being voiced by Kevin Conroy and the Spectre being voiced by Mark Hamill. So while everyone still enjoyed the show, the fact that we got a dark episode kind of made people want the dark stuff again. So there's that. And then we end up with the final season of only 13 episodes because it did the 65 episode run. And in this one, you've got crossovers with Superman, with Wonder Woman, with Green Lantern, with the Hal Jordan version, because most of the time you got Guy Gardner. And it did a proper series finale. And part of the reason they did that was they wanted a new animated series when The Dark Knight Rises came out. So during the tail end of Batman the Brave and the Bold, Cartoon Network did what was then known as DC Nation. They had a block of various DC cartoons and they greenlit Young Justice. This one features the sidekicks of all the top characters going on covert missions while also still trying to deal with the fact that the ones in here are teenagers. And this particular series, you get a more serious vibe where Brave and the Bull was kind of lighthearted. So it had a similar tone to the DCAU, but you had characters you hadn't seen in animated form before. And something you never really see in animated shows is that the characters aged. As you can tell, you've got Dick Grayson's Robin on here. In season two, he becomes Nightwing. Now you've got Tim Drake as Robin. You've got Impulse in here. And... In a little bit of a controversial move, you even have one of the characters die. Unfortunately, there were some issues going on between Cartoon Network and Warner Brothers, 
and the show got canceled. But this was when DC did their streaming service, DCU, which ended up getting folded into Max, long story short on all that stuff. And they brought back Young Justice for season three, Outsiders. Now you've got Beast Boy in a more prominent role. You've got other characters that weren't in seasons one and two. You've now got the characters aging. The ones that were teenagers in season one are now adults. Good season, but I gotta say, not quite up on par with the first two seasons. Phantoms currently does not have a physical release. During the time that Young Justice was on, this was also when DC did their first attempt at doing a shared universe of live action movies to compete with the MCU. The first movie being the Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern movie. So we got Bruce Tim back behind the helm to make Green Lantern the animated series. You get some crossovers, but not quite the crossovers you would expect. Unfortunately, because the live action movie bombed, the toy companies did not want to make Green Lantern the animated series toys. And this was the first CG show, making it very expensive. So after 26 episodes, it did end up getting canceled due to lack of funding. <sighs> that was not the first attempt. Well, this was the first attempt. We did get another attempt at DC doing CG, and that being Beware the Batman. This was the Batman animated show that took the place of Brave and the Bold. In this one, you've got Batman still early on in his career. You've got Katana, and in this one, she is someone who learned some of her stuff through Alfred, and Alfred is on the field with Batman and Katana occasionally. On one end, I applaud the show for using lesser known characters. Ra's al Ghul was the only like major character we got. We saw a lot of Professor Pig and Mr. Toad. We saw a lot of Anarchy. We saw a lot of Magpie. So on one end, that was cool. On the other end, you could tell this show did not have a budget. There's one part where they're talking about the traffic and the only vehicle you see is the Batmobile. It does start to pick up a little bit towards the end when they bring in Slade Wilson. Yeah, that's right, they bring him in. But once again, the show did not get good ratings. It didn't have the same proper funding as some of the other shows, and it wasn't well received. So the last few episodes got dumped onto Adult Swim in the middle of the night and slowly faded away. And for anyone wondering, yes, this is the season one, part one. I do have season one, part two in here as well. I still need to upgrade the DVD to Blu-ray, but there is part two. Cartoon Network did one more attempt with having DC animation on their channel at a time when they were doing more 15-minute crazy sort of shows like Adventure Time and Gumball and stuff like that. And we got Justice League action. Just like Justice League Unlimited, you get a lot of the lesser-known characters. One of them that did a lot of stuff on here I don't know why I'm showing off Season 1 Part 2 first instead of Season 1 Part 1. But you get a lot of episodes with Firestorm and Space Cabbie. And you get a couple of episodes with Plastic Man and Booster Gold. And you even get Constantine in a couple of episodes. But between its 15 minute runtime and the fact that this just wasn't the direction Cartoon Network was going at the time... It got its 52 episodes, and that was it. And we are now at the last one on this particular video. 
DC did their attempt to have their own streaming service, which we saw the return of Young Justice. We got the Titans live action show. We got the Doom Patrol live action show. But they brought in something else. An animated series for Harley Quinn. The late 20 teens saw an uprise in comic sales for Harley Quinn. She was also a member of the Suicide Squad. So we're seeing more of this character and DC did an animated series. The Blu-ray has seasons one and two as one set. The DVDs, you can get season one and season two separately. And you get Harley kind of being a little misunderstood. And one of the things you got to go into if you have never seen it before is the show is very much from Harley Quinn's point of view. So if you're thinking that a character isn't showing like who they really are, it's from Harley's point of view. One other thing I gotta say I liked on this is we get the return of Diedrich Bader voicing Batman. After the first two seasons, this is when Warner Brothers and then paired company AT&T decided they wanted to have one streaming service for all their content. So the TV shows and movies from DC Universe went into what's now known as Max, then HBO Max, and that's how we got season three. Oddly enough, normally with Warner Brothers, the first few might be like wide releases with the later few if they don't sell well, being Warner Archive. This one's the Warner Archive release, and this is the Warner Home Video release, hence the slipcover. This is season three, which focuses instead of having Joker, we now have Harley and Poison Ivy in a relationship. And this season kind of focuses on that. At the time of me recording this, season four does have a planned release date, but it is not out yet. And I believe I've heard rumors of my adventures with Superman season one getting a physical release as well. And that's everything from 2001 to the present day. And that is everything from my DC Animated Shows collection. Yes, I'm missing a couple of things. Like, I don't have Plastic Man. I don't have the Zeta Project. But, we got the majority of it. And like I said, there's still some more coming. So, this time next year, there might be an updated collection video. Let me know down below. Would you like a DC Animated Movie? collection video and because I have been asked this before when I do talk comic book stuff if you want a video about me talking about why I prefer DC to Marvel I can do that but it's not fully a movie TV thing so it's not going to be like the typical video you would get on this channel and that's going to do it for this one if you are new to this channel hit that subscribe button you like what you see Leave a thumbs up, comment down below. What's your favorite DC animated series? Other than Batman the Animated Series, because that's number one and there's no arguing that one. But what's your other favorites? Would you like to see a DC animated movie collection video? And would you like to see me talk about why I prefer DC to Marvel? But that's gonna do it for this one. Thank you all for watching and tune in next time.